You've heard us mention the FAFSA for months. Free application for federal student aid or FAFSA. You need to file the FAFSA. File your FAFSA. Complete and submit the free application for federal student aid or FAFSA form. AKA FAFSA. FAFSA. Or FAFSA. FAFSA. Complete the FAFSA. To submit your FAFSA. Well, it's finally time. Hi, I'm Alex Leeper and here's how to fill out your FAFSA. The free application for federal student aid or FAFSA is the first step in applying for federal student aid like grants, student loans, and work study. While it is free to fill out, the process can be overwhelming. You can fill out the FAFSA electronically online at studentaid.gov by clicking on the apply for aid link and then complete the FAFSA form. The FAFSA form is available every year on October 1st. The FAFSA form closes every year at the end of June. I would encourage you to fill it out as soon as possible on or after October 1st to meet any deadlines your targeted colleges may have. Remember, you have to fill out a FAFSA form every year you're in school, beginning with your senior year in high school. If you are from a state that mandates completion of the FAFSA as a graduation requirement, filling out your FAFSA form now will make the rest of your senior year easier. Also, you need to fill out the FAFSA if you are planning to attend a four-year college, community college, or trade school. Federal aid is available for all of these categories of education institutions. When you start the application as a student, it will ask you for an FSA ID or Federal Student Aid ID. This is a username and password combination that allows students to sign their FAFSA form electronically. The FSA ID created will be used throughout the college career to apply for aid and sign loan contracts if your student should decide to borrow money through student loans. It is very important for the student to create their FSA ID with their own information. A social security number, email address, and mobile phone number can only be associated with one FSA ID. If you need to provide parent information on your FAFSA, then one of your parents will need to provide their own FSA ID to sign the form. If your parent doesn't have a social security number, your parent won't be able to create an FSA ID, which requires a social security number. This means you have to select the option to print a signature page when you get to the end of your FAFSA form. Remember, the student should create their own FSA ID and a parent should create their own to eliminate any confusion. The FAFSA asks a series of questions that determine whether you are a dependent or independent student for the purposes of applying for federal student aid. In general, a student is dependent until 24 years of age. Not living with your parents or not being claimed by them on your tax forms does not necessarily make you an independent student for the purposes of applying for federal student aid. If you feel you have an extenuating circumstance in which your parent cannot provide information and you're under 24 years of age, I would encourage you to discuss your situation with a financial aid administrator at the school you're looking to attend to get guidance on your specific situation. The questions on the FAFSA ask for information about you, like your name, date of birth, address, etc., and all your information about your financial situation. Here is a list of helpful information you may want to gather before starting your application. You'll need to get your social security number or your alien registration number. If you're a dependent student, you'll also need your parent's social security number if it applies. Federal tax information or tax returns, including IRS W-2 information for you and your parents, will be needed to complete the application. The application does use tax information from two years prior. So for example, when you complete the application for the 2021-22 school year, it will ask you for 2019 tax or wage information. Records of untaxed income, such as child support receipts and interest income, will need to be provided as well. You want to have information on your cash, saving, and checking account balances for both student and parent. Investments like stocks, bonds, and real estate will need to be provided, but not the home you live in or any retirement funds. Business and farm asset information would also need to be provided for student and parents if you're a dependent student. It is perfectly acceptable to start filling out the form and then come back later to complete the process. Near the beginning of the application, you'll create a save key or a temporary password that you'll use to start your FAFSA form. Save it without finishing it and then you can use that password to open it back up later and start where you left off. However, don't forget to come back and complete the process. The application will start by asking student demographic questions and then move into the school selection. 
You must list at least one school to receive your information. The schools on your application will use that information you provide on the FAFSA to determine the types of aids and the amount of aid that you might qualify for. You can either enter the school code if you know it or search to find the colleges you're interested in. It doesn't matter what order you list the schools in if you're putting more than one on your application. You can list up to 10 schools and it is possible to come back to your form after it's submitted to add another college. Just click on the Make FAFSA Corrections tab at studentaid.gov website when you log back in using your FSA ID. The next part of the application will go over the dependency status questions, as mentioned earlier, to determine whether or not you need to provide parent information. If you need to provide parent information, this will be the next step of the application where you provide parent demographic information, and then parent financial information. For the financial part of the application, it is strongly recommended that you use the IRS data retrieval tool. In order for your parent to use the tool, they will have to enter their FSA ID information. If your parent does not have an FSA ID or is unable to create one, they cannot use the IRS data retrieval tool. The IRS data retrieval tool takes you to the IRS website where you will need to provide your information exactly as you provided on your tax return. You can then choose to import your information into the FAFSA form, but note that for security and privacy reasons, you won't see the actual information. If you choose to import your information into the FAFSA from the IRS, you'll see transferred from the IRS in appropriate fields. You will not be able to make changes to those answers. If your income situation has changed significantly, such as a job loss from the tax year information you're using on the application, then you'd want to inquire with the school's financial aid office on your options for evaluation based off your current income situation. After parent financial information is provided, student financial information will be next, and students will also have the option to import their information from the IRS if they filed taxes for the year being requested on the application. The last part of the application is signing and submitting it. Don't worry, before submission, it'll give you a chance to review all your answers to make sure everything looks correct. As a reminder, if your parent is unable to get an FSA ID, they will need to print a signature page, which will need to be mailed to the address provided on that page for processing. Once your application is submitted, you'll get a confirmation page with an estimate of financial aid you may be qualified for. Your application then gets processed by the Department of Education and sent to the schools that you indicated on your application. Your school then processes that information. Sometimes additional documentation may be required before your school can offer you aid, so you want to check with the financial aid office at the school or schools you are looking to attend to know what their process is and how to check your aid status. Once you're accepted at a school, you can compare the aid package that college offers based off the information submitted on the FAFSA. Compare the aid offers along with the cost of attending each college to see which school ends up being the best financial fit for you. Even if you don't think you'll receive funding, it is important to fill out a FAFSA. Most people qualify for some type of federal aid, including low interest federal student loans. Many factors besides income, such as your family size and year you're in school, are considered when determining your aid package. When you fill out your FAFSA, you are also automatically applying for funds from your state and even possibly your school. Some schools won't even consider you for any of their scholarships, including academic scholarships, until you have submitted your FAFSA form. In addition, most scholarship applications may require you to fill out the FAFSA as well. Don't make any assumptions, fill out your application. The process can be intimidating and stressful for students and their families. Remember, the financial aid office at each of your intended colleges is available to help you through the process or answer any questions you may have. Don't be afraid to ask for help or ask questions about your aid. We know this is a lot of information, but hopefully we were able to help you understand the application just a little bit better. If you have found any of the information in this video useful, hit the thumbs up to let us know we have helped. If you have any more questions about filling out the FAFSA, let us know in the comments down below.